Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about finding mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. If you have not previously seen my video on finding Nash equilibria in matrix games, you might want to do that. That said, I'm going to try to make this one as self-contained as possible. So I'll start off and I'll talk about finding Nash equilibria in matrix games here, and then I'll use that logic then to build mixed strategy Nash equilibria. Even so, finding Nash equilibria, finding mixed strategy Nash equilibria is going to be a little bit more involved than finding ordinary Nash equilibria. We have the same definition for a Nash equilibrium. Again, our definition for Nash equilibrium is just, we'd say, a strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium if no player has a profitable unilateral deviation, which basically means if everybody's just doing what they're doing, no one wants to switch alone. No one wants to be the only one to switch their strategy. It could definitely be the case that they would both rather jointly switch, but that's not how a Nash equilibrium is defined. Nash equilibrium says as long as, as, long as the co-player keeps doing what they're doing, you don't have an incentive to switch. And that's natural given the way that we find Nash equilibria, which is by looking for best responses. So if everybody's currently mutually best responding, you've got a Nash equilibria. And if you'd have an incentive to switch, you're not currently best responding. So mixed strategy is going to add another layer of complexity in that now we're going to assume there's some there's some probability distribution, some mixture over the strategies that a player's got. So for instance, maybe a player would play something two-thirds of the time and something else one-third of the time. Maybe it's got two strategies and it's going to, it's going to mix over those two strategies two-thirds of the time on one strategy, one-third of the time on the other. Well, for a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, it's going to be the case that no one wants to switch, meaning nobody wants to place greater emphasis on one or more strategies. So here what's got to happen is this particular player, if this was part of an, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium strategy profile, it would have to be the case that the two-third and one-third is keeping the other player indifferent between their strategies. Two-thirds and one-thirds are, are chosen such that your co-player wouldn't want to switch. Because if your co-player switches, then you're going to want to shade towards one in one direction or the other. Actually, matter of fact, like before I say more, let me just go to the matrix and then uh, it would be a little bit more concrete there. When finding mixed strategy Nash equilibria, your task is to find the right probability distribution, to find the right mixture. Remember, the goal is to find a situation where no one's wanting to switch, meaning we want to find the probability distribution that's going to keep the co-player indifferent. That's going to be key. Matter of fact, as we're doing this calculation, that's the place where people might make a mistake is you might forget you're trying to keep the co-player indifferent. You're not trying to keep yourself indifferent. You're trying to keep your co-player indifferent. That's the structure that we're going to develop. Okay, so here's the game I want to do this in. So it's called Matching Pennies. So maybe years ago, children used to play this game. I don't know, maybe other people would, who knows. Matching Pennies involves two players with two strategies. You have a coin, the coin's got two sides, two faces, heads and tails. You're going to display your coin at the same time as your co-player. And if the heads match, or if the heads, if the faces match, then if it's heads, heads, or tails, tails, then one of the players gets to keep both coins. If they don't match, if the faces are different, then the other player gets to keep both coins. So we'd say we've got two players, we've got two strategies, and outcomes are where you could gain or lose your penny. Here's the matrix representation. So I've got player one, I've got player two. Player one is choosing the rows. So player one is choosing heads or tails, and that's going to determine are we in the top row or the bottom row. Player two is choosing heads or tails in columns. Are we going to be in the left column or the right column? The first number is going to be the payoff to player one. The second number is the payoff to player two. So there's going to be four strategy profiles, heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. And then the outcomes associated with those strategy profiles are these are, are given by the numbers in the payoff table. So just the first one, suppose player one uses heads and player two uses heads. Player one gets the penny, player, one, player two loses the penny. Right? All right, so now let's talk about finding pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So to find pure strategy Nash equilibrium, we're gonna be looking for each player's best response. If you're familiar with the underlying method, you'll see that's exactly what I've done here. I'm gonna go through it just a little bit more deliberately. So I'm gonna look for best responses. Player one's best response to player two's choice of heads is heads. Player one's best response to player two's choice of tails is tails. 
And we get that just by defining player one as the player who gets the penny if the faces match and loses the penny if the faces don't match. Then we can see this with numbers. Player two chooses heads. Player one gets the penny if they use heads. They lose the penny if they choose tails. So we'll underline one for heads after heads. If player two chooses tails and player one chooses heads, they lose their penny, but they gain or they gain the other person's penny if they use tails. So we'll underline here. What about player two? Well, player two's best response to player one's choice is to do the opposite. So if player one chooses heads, player two's best response is tails. If player one chooses tails, player two's best response is heads. Here we see if player one chooses heads, player two can get the penny by choosing tails or lose the penny by choosing heads. If player one chooses tails, player two loses, loses the penny by playing tails, gains the penny by playing heads. Okay, so we've underlined all of our best responses. That's consistent with this language here. And we see there are no Nash equilibria in peer strategies and no one has a dominant strategy. So looking back at the matrix, the Nash equilibrium would, would, would show up if we had best responses, if we had underlines for two numbers in the same cell. That didn't happen. To have a dominant strategy, you'd have to have a player's payoffs underlined across their row or across the column. So, so we'd have to have an underline here for player one or here for player one. And then for player two to have a dominant strategy, we'd have to have like an underline here. Right, okay, so that didn't happen. So there's no dominant strategy. Now, you can have games with multiple Nash equilibria. In that case, no one would have a dominant strategy. And if you, can, if you have a dominant strategy, it's gotta be part of any Nash equilibrium that would, that would result. Uh, so we don't have a Nash equilibrium, or we don't have a Nash equilibrium in peer strategies, and we don't have dominant strategies. Okay, what about in mixed strategies? There's a theorem that says that every game's gotta have at least one Nash equilibria. If you can't find it in peer strategies, it's gotta be in mixed strategies. And so let's go ahead and find it. What we want to do is we want to we want to come up with a way to, to denote our probability distribution. So I'm going to say let's call p the probability that player two is using heads, and so one minus p is going to be the probability that player two uses tails. Let's call q the probability that player one uses heads, and player and one minus q the probability that player one uses tails. All right, that's this right here. Good. Now player one is going to choose Q to keep player two indifferent between heads and tails. And player two is going to choose P to keep player one indifferent between heads and tails. And this is how we're going to develop this. So I say, remember, the goal is to keep the co-player indifferent. So player one uses heads if. So when would player one use heads? Player one is going to play heads if their payoff, their expected payoff from using heads is higher than their expected payoff for using tails. So that's going to be 1 times probability p plus minus 1 with probability 1 minus p has to be bigger than minus 1 with probability p plus 1 with probability 1 minus p. So written out, here's what we have. Ultimately, it amounts to a little bit of arithmetic. Let me, let me do something here. Let me put this. That's pretty cool. All right. So we've got the matrix here so we can stare at this and our work. So right here on the left-hand side, I have player one's payoff to choosing H, heads, and I have player one's payoff to choosing tails over here. Player one uses heads if greater than, right? Greater If this is greater than this. Again, where are these numbers coming from? Because this is where you probably have questions. So this one times P is this one times P, which is the payoff for using heads, if with, you know, with probability P that player two is using heads. But with probability 1 minus p, you're going to get minus 1. So that's this right here. And then my payoff for using tails, right? So if I use tails, then I'm going to get minus 1 with probability p. And I'm going to get 1 with probability 1 minus p. So if this inequality holds, then I'm going to be indifferent. Uh, and if it fails to hold, if the sign is greater, then I'm going to shade towards using more heads. Okay, so I'm going to calculate to find the point of equality. And so this is just a bunch of arithmetic. This is going to be 1 times 1 is minus 1. 1 times minus 1 is 1. Over here, I have minus 1 times p, or minus p. 1 times 1 is 1, and then minus p. And then solving, I'm going to have p is equal, or p is greater than 
So for P greater than one half, that's gonna shade player one towards using heads more. Okay, let's check that logic now. So this is saying that if P is equal to one half, then player one is gonna be indifferent between playing heads or playing tails. If P is greater than a half, then player one is gonna play heads more frequently. All right, well, if P is greater than one half, that means that player two is playing heads more than half the time. Yeah, if player two is playing heads more than half the time, player one's gonna play, gonna play heads, right? Because that's gonna, that's gonna maximize their payoff. All right, so player two's strategy in Nash Equilibrium is gonna be playing one half heads plus one half tails because that's gonna be what's necessary to keep player one indifferent. All right, now let's solve the game from player, let, let's solve for Q, right? Let's solve the game from player two's perspective. Let's find out what player one's gotta choose Q to be to keep player two indifferent. All right, so I, okay, so this is, uh, Probability player one choose. I had to I fix this just a second ago. Is this right? Player no, this is wrong. It was correct here. <laughs> so right. Q uh, so this let me just kind of take that away. How about that? That's the easier solution, right? <laughs> the goal is to keep the co player indifferent. Player two uses heads if uh when's player two gonna use heads? Player two is gonna use heads if the payoff from heads exceeds the payoff from tails. What are the payoff from heads? It's gonna be minus one with probability Q and one with probability one minus Q. And then it's gonna be one with probability Q and minus one with probability one minus Q. Okay, so that's this right here. This is player two's payoff to using heads. This is player two's payoff to using tails. Again, this minus one times one Q is this one times Q. This one times one minus Q is this one times one minus Q. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna find the point, we're gonna find the Q that's gonna make the player indifferent between using heads or using tails. Again, it's one half. It's gotta be, the game's symmetric, right? So player one is gonna use the strategy one half of the time playing heads, one half of the time playing tails. All right, so let's see. Is this, so when is, uh, so let's see, so Player one, player two is going to use heads if player one is playing. Ah, uh, player two is going to use heads if player one is using heads. Because Q is the probability that player one's using heads. Player two is going to play heads if the probability that player one's using heads is smaller than a half, right? If more than half, uh, put differently, if player one is playing he playing tails more than half the time, then player two is going to play heads. Right. That's right, because if player one is playing tails more than half the time, player two plays heads because then they have the different, the different uh, face. Okay, so our mixed strategy, Nash Equilibrium, is for each player to play half of their, to play each of their strategies half the time. So P is gonna be a half, one minus P is there for a half, Q is a half, and one minus Q is there for a half. This indeed is a Nash equilibrium because as long as the co-player is playing each strategy with half probability, no one wants to switch. Note, if you played one with greater frequency than a half, then the rival is gonna respond and it's gonna shade towards whichever is gonna be their profit maximizing strategy. So for instance, if, if you're player one and player two starts playing heads more than half the time, you're gonna play heads more than half the time, maybe all the time. What if your player what if your player two and player one's playing heads quite a bit? Well if your player two and player one's playing heads more than half the time, then you're gonna start playing tails because you'll be over here, you'll get that one. Okay. So there's other games that are kinda of like this. So think about like rock, paper, scissors, right? So so rock, paper, scissors, right? So rock beats scissors, right? So rock, scissors breaks rock, paper covers rock, and then scissors cuts paper. So we can make this into a game, two players, three strategies. And so player one's got rock, paper, scissors. Player two's got rock, paper, scissors. You can check that I've got this correct, right? If if we both use the same, if we both like rock, rock is tie, uh, paper, paper is tie, scissors, scissors is, is tie. There's a Gary Larson cartoon. It's uh, far side. And so it's got like the, it's got the uh, cave people sitting around the fire and they've got their hands out and they say, Dang, 
tied again. And the caption says, before scissors and paper. <laughs> the, other, the other joke is uh, Homer Simpson, who says, uh, good old rock, nothing beats rock. Don't. Okay. So then I've got these, I've got the payoff set up just right, right? So we've got rock is going to lose to paper. So player two is playing paper. They get one. Player one was using rock, they lose, but rock beat scissors, so one, right? And you can check the other ones. I'll just leave this for a second. What's the best response to using rock, to the co-player using rock? Paper. What's the best response to the co-player using paper? Scissors. What's the best response to your co-player using scissors? Rock. Okay. There's no pure Nash equilibrium. Again, we don't have any, we don't have two underlines in the same cell, right? There's a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Which is it? You could probably take some inspiration from matching pennies, right? So the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is to play each a third of the time. So my thing got cut off here. The mixed strategy Nash equilibrium with with uh, with rock paper scissors is to play each of your strategies uh, a third of the time. So you can actually go ahead and solve. It's a little bit more involved, right? Because you'd have like Q, you have like one minus Q, and then you'd have one. Um, one minus one minus q to find the the third the third um, the third probability. So this is a little bit more algebraically involved, but you could use it. You could you can do that using the exact same method that I just uh, that I just developed. So anyway, <laughs> hope you found the the video useful. Um, go look at that. Go find that that far side cartoon. It's kind of kind of funny. So anyway.